Hello there Capricorns. Welcome to your June 2017 tarot reading. So uh, the first message that I have for you guys is um, I feel like there's a, a person in your environment who is trying to flatter you, who's trying to please you, who's trying to really get your attention and you know um, stay on your good side. And I feel like they're laying it on a little bit thick. So for some of you, it could be like a, a, a niece, a nephew, somebody younger, and others, it could be like a subordinate, a person that you're training or a person that you're doing like, you know, performance review for, or you're working, collaborating with them in some way. But I feel like they, they could also be somebody that has a crush on you and they're laying it on just a little bit too thick. And I feel that it can make you, um... I don't sense that you're mad at them or you hate them or you feel that they're insincere. I don't feel that they're insincere. I feel like they do like you and they want to stay on your good side and they want to, you know, um, follow your footsteps. But I, I feel like you're a little bit embarrassed by it. So that's the only thing I, I feel coming through. Um, this is going to, this energy is going to permeate throughout this month. So I feel like you're getting a lot of um, fun, lighthearted jostling back and forth between you and another person. And I feel like the person is, um, making you feel a little bit, um, embarrassed. Okay. And they they don't have bad intentions. So don't, um, guard against it. And then for others, um, the second message I have here is, uh, communication from an ex. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, but I keep seeing this X energy coming through for a lot of signs. And in particular, um, air signs, so Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, and then now you, you guys. So I feel like air signs and earth signs overall. So a lot of uh, past energy is coming back in. What I'm feeling is... Um, you're making new strides in your life and you're trying to, you know, um, I, I feel like you have a lot of positive energies that are breaking through for you. If not this month, then it's going to be, you know, from now until the August time frame. And what that does is that when vibrationally you have moved on or you're moving to a better place, old people are always going to come back energetically, mainly because it's a test, okay? It's a test for you to keep in good strides, keep moving forward. Because I feel like exes and people from the past, they're afraid they've lost you or they're afraid that you're drifting away. And so they're going to reach out at with that last ditch attempt at reconciliation. But I feel that at this point in your life, you're looking at a situation kind of objectively and you're, it, it feels to me like you're looking through, somebody's knocking on the door, you're looking through the peephole and you're just like, well, who is it? What do you want? And if the answer from the person outside the door is not satisfying, is not meaningful, or is not straightforward, you're just going to walk away. And so this is the month where I, I feel like people are coming to you for assistance or they're coming to you, especially exes, for feedback, for, for some type of last ditch attempt at, you know, engaging with you in a conversation. And you're not going to waste the time because honestly, you feel that energetically you're in a different place and your paths are no longer aligned. And so you're trying to move on. Um, I do feel they're saying like, you know, laying to rest a lot of unhealthy habits. So that basically means um, quitting drinking, quitting smoking, um, having a more rigid um, exercise routine for, for yourself for many of you. And taking better care of your health, not, uh, you know, drinking to, to have fun rather than drinking to uh, forget, forget like, um, you know, unhappy times, rather than drinking just to, to feel to, as a form of escapism. So I also feel like, you know, they're saying an end to a lot of bad habits, an, an end to reckless spending and reckless behavior. And having new opportunities so that you can create a more stable financial future for yourself and having a lot more stability so that you have a way where you can move forward and you can feel really good about, you know, where you are in life and really good about your achievements and your progress, okay? So this is a really, I feel like the energy is very, very strong where you're going to feel really happy and just very excited and very optimistic this month. So one last card here. Let me see if there's any uh, last minute 
messages here. Um, they're saying that somebody's motives will be very clear to you. And uh, I do see a little bit of jealousy, envy from the work environment. I do sense that. And um, they're saying somebody's motives will be really, really clear to you. If in the past you're just like, I don't know why I get a weird vibe about this person. Well, this is the month in which you're going to know where you stand with them. I don't see them confronting you, but I feel like you're going to hear something about it. And um, either through third parties or somebody's going to pass some information along to you. Or something will happen to reveal somebody's intentions or motives or feelings towards you. And so, you know wisdom and insight it's um it, it allows us to know how to navigate an interaction with another person okay so let me just go into your reading so the first card that fell out here is the empress and the empress overall this is a card about attracting really good things to you okay taking charge of your domain being able to rule your territory being able to claim your put um, stake your claim and really being able to through everything that you've done through all your accomplishment and through the virtue of being you i feel that you are being appreciated for all your efforts and uh, when i think of the empress this overall denotes to me a card about expanding okay expanding especially the family unit Thinking about strategies that we can take so that we become a lot more abundant financially, emotionally, intellectually, whatever the situation is, you are aiming to be a lot more abundant for this month. I feel for some of you, there is a, an element here of family planning, possibly thinking about decorating a home, like a room in the home to create a nursery for, for those who are expecting, you know, like a child or have recently uh, given birth to a child or have welcomed something new in your home environment. For others of you, you're having heavy talks here with another person about possibly purchasing a home. So you could be renting now, wanting to shift into a home buyer's um, or homeowner's position. Or you could be thinking about you know, making long-term purchases or even investment properties to inc increase your income, but also to purchase property that you can own and live in. So there's an element here about wanting to create something long-lasting and stable. Um, this card with the five of pe uh, pentacles in the reverse, this is a card about financial hardships, financial difficulties. This is the month where you are going to begin to quickly, very rapidly, very quickly shift away from this poverty consciousness, okay? And I feel like physically, financially, things are going to be really good for you guys, financially. And of course, you know, um, money is greatly linked up with our career, so I feel like there is new responsibilities given to you, new roles, new tasks, new titles, new salary, new pay scales negotiated and signed on and agreed upon so your financial situation is going to start to change in the month of june and it's going to change dramatically for the better um, i'm seeing an element of possibly you know like an increase in the increment of um they're they're saying here five so it could be you know an additional 500 a month an additional 5,000 a year an additional you know like um, even five five thousand in bonus commission and things like that but I feel that you're going to be able to accumulate a lot of wealth in a very short period of time starting in the month of June continuing forward so I see a lot of prosperity that's coming into the picture for you uh, what I'm also feeling as well is I feel like many of you are in a relationship right now. You are in a relationship and uh, you have a partner that you have always seen eye to eye with, okay? You've always like agreed. You've always been very similar in values, in in the way you look at life, in the, the ways that, you know, in, in the things that you are on board with. And um, I do feel there's an element here about two people needing to decide like long-term goals, long-term um, prospects. And what that means to me is um, because of this big wave of change that's happening for you, there's a lot of discussions that's taking place between you and your partner. What are we doing now? Where do we go? Where do we live? Do we buy a home together? Do we move in? Do we get married? So I feel like there's a lot of questions um, for those in stable relationships who are um, even married or, you know, if you're still 
dating or if you're still just um, in a relationship with another person, there's a lot of discussion between you and your significant other about how to invest money, how to make money work for the both of you. And there are a lot of questions as well about family planning, about marriage, about stability and viability of that relationship. It's a neutral energy, so I feel like it can it, it can go both ways. But I do feel solidification of relationships and a lot of talks, serious discussions, serious talks about you know the next step between you and your partner. And I feel like you both are coming into a situation where you're deciding things together as a couple. So we have a new phase coming in as well with this death card. It basically denotes the times are changing. Financial instability is left behind you for good because coming into this month of June, you're going to do things differently. You're going to be able to have a lot of positive reception. You're going to have a lot of success. You're going to be able to reach out and have, um, I, I want to say like have a lot of command and power of persuasion over other people and um, I mentioned this with Virgos you're not a sign that is flashy and flamboyant you know as an earth sign I feel like you work really well on your own but I feel some of you uh, social nicety knowing how to mingle knowing how to make small talk knowing how to be a very likable a people oriented person is going to be really good for you for this um, this this month and for your professional life so you know the um, I gave in the previous reading for you guys it might have been a few months ago like back in March or April uh, you're the climber of the zodiac and goats um, climb goats are very stoic and they are also very you know lone wolf ish types and um, what I feel is that for a lot of you um, you work in a very silent stealthy way you don't really reveal your plans and, and things like that unless it's somebody who's very close to it is with somebody who's very close to you so you're not out there blabbing to the world you know your ideas and uh, you're not somebody that needs other people to bounce ideas off of you are very self-contained and you're very stoic and um, some of you you might have had a lot of success in your life and a lot of it is completely of your own doing no one really helped you you know you you got where you you are because of your sheer dedication sheer hard work keeping things close to your chest and having a, a good sense of intuitive timing and then I feel for others of you um, your ability to be very sociable, very likable, um, team-oriented, a great team player, um, whether or not you're able to do that, it might have hurt or really hinder your career development. Does that make sense? So I feel like some of you, there's great success here because you might have been professionally in a field where you don't have to collaborate. You can work as if, you know, everybody works as if they're insulated, as if every man's an island. But I do feel for others of you, your ability to really network professionally, to really show other um, managers or supervisor that you're a great leader, that you're a great team player. Um, the opportunities might not have presented themselves in the past or your ability to work collaboratively and successfully um, might have hindered your ability to rise to a position of prominence. And so coming through for this month, I feel that you need other people. You need to, you will be put in a position where you have to collaborate with other people, where you need to teach other people, where you need to interact heavily with other people. And other people's assessment of you matters a great deal and it might make or break the work environment. It might like allow you a foot in the door into a really prestigious company, a very stable, uh, enjoyable place to work or it can hurt your career development. So I feel overall working with other people rather than, you know, being um, being the, the lone wolf in the limelight, collaborating with other people, reaching out to other people, showing other people how great of a team player you are, how on board you are, how how effective you are at communicating and playing nice and being able to mingle and being able to socialize. Um, it's going to be really good for you. And I feel some of you are a little bit kind of like um, shy, okay? So you might 
not be used to making cold calls. You might be in a customer service capacity where you have to like resolve problems, troubleshoot, help people deal with some issues. And you might be a little bit more on the shy side. This is the month in which you need to step out of that comfort zone and play a little bit more of a dominant role. Okay, so play a little bit more of a leadership role, play a little bit more of an aggressive, assertive, dominant role so that you can stand out from amongst the crowd. I do see overall um, the work environment that you're in, it's very dynamic. It's not a rigid structure company or an institution. It's, um, it's highly innovative, so they do value innovation. And innovation, it doesn't come through in a vacuum, right? Like um, technological diffusion, innovative ideas, innovative breakthroughs. They don't happen because everyone works in a bubble. They happen because people share and collaborate and, you know, um, talk about best practices and basically pick and choose what works and what doesn't so that they can uh, have the best to successfully complete a project to successfully uh, design or create something or design and assemble a team or assemble a product. So I feel like the environment that you're in values innovation. They value information sharing. And so being a lot more of a team player is going to be really good for you. And uh, the environment itself is not rigid and boring and, you know, um, I want to say it's not based on seniority and I feel that being able to joke around a little bit more not keeping yourself shut in your office or in your cubicle is going to be really good for you so you need other people for this month okay and you need to branch out um, I do feel though for some of you there is a significant relationship and I feel like it's um it's a family situation um, that is going through some turbulence, okay? So I feel for some of you, it could be somebody that you've been dating for a while, you have a very strong emotional co uh, connection, but they're not looking for the stability that you're looking for. And at the same time, I also feel there is an element here about you elevating things happening really fast for you. It is your time to shine. And so energetically, you're in a different, on a different wavelength, on a different vibration. The partner that you've been with, I feel that you're no longer seeing eye to eye. You're, you're no longer working towards the same goals. And so you might quickly realize this. And on top of that, your world is opening up. There's new people soliciting you, soliciting you for dates, soliciting you for opportunities to go out, have fun, let your hair down. And so I feel like you're reassessing a major significant relationship in your life and to figure out whether or not it is still possible for you to um, be in it or whether or not it, it, it's really hindering your progress and your ability to move forward, okay? So it's a very other-oriented month, Capricorn, and your ability to work with others is really going to allow you to move on to that next stage, that next evolutionary stage in your professional life, in your own personal growth, okay? Financially, I feel this is going to be a really big breakthrough month for many of you. It's looking really good, okay? So I'm very happy to see this. I'm so happy to see this for you guys because I know you work really hard. You guys work so hard, Capricorns. And a lot of the times too, you don't you you do what's right, you and the Virgos. You do what's right. You don't want that recognition, you know. Um you don't mind getting your hands dirty and you don't mind doing something, uh picking up somebody else's slack and you do it without complaint. So I feel like you guys are hard worker. But given the right opportunities, you know, you can shine so, so strongly. But a lot of the times you're happy with the status quo. You're happy where you are. And it takes you a really long time to uh, shift into new location, shift into new careers. Okay, so I feel like I'm really happy to see this energy for you guys. You've been needing it for quite some months. Okay, so let me see what's in store for you for love, relationships and romance. So Capricorns, love, relationship, and romance for the month of June 2022. 
2016. Okay, so let me just um, let me just talk about a, a big message that I felt when I was shuffling the cards. And um, going back to what I mentioned about things in, in in general, okay. I feel like a lot of the times you stay in jobs for a really long time. And I feel like once you stay in, in a job situation, it takes some major, major external shocks or even internal shocks for you to leave a place. And um, I feel like this that, that same message is permeating in your relationship sector. It takes a major, major shock for you to leave a relationship partner. Um, all the Capricorn people that I've, I've known, and, and you know, this is just something astrologically speaking t to me as well. You have a really, and, and this is true especially for Capricorns and Pisces because you're towards the end of the zodiac. You embody all the energies of the previous signs, and you also understand, you have a very deep, sympathetic, and em empathetic understanding of human nature. And so you don't hold people, you know, like you, you don't hold grudges against people. And at the same time, um, you're very forgiving. You're very lenient. You're very understanding of people and their fa faults and their flaws that you don't really hold a grudge against them. Okay. You just hope that they get better and that they, you know, become better people. You don't really, you, you don't hate anybody. And so... What I feel happening here is this. We have a situation here. The Three of Swords. And the Three of Swords is something that is a little bit hurtful. It's something that um, it, it comes through as a... So let me talk about this first. Crowning this reading is something that you're thinking about. And you're thinking about hurts and I, I want to say like problematic communication with another person. And problematic communication with another person basically means that two people are not seeing eye to eye. They, they might not want the same things in a relationship. And it feels to me like there is a third party interfering in a relationship. It's indicative here with the Three of Cups and the Nine of Swords. A lot of anxiety, a lot of worries, and a lot of just restless nights. Not being able to get that good sleep because you're thinking about your partner, you're thinking about where they are, you're thinking whether or not they're with somebody else or, you know, things like that. And this is something that has happened in the past. You had a conversation with your partner, things are settled, things are okay, and they, they, it seems to me as if they've made some promises that they will change, or they've made some promises that, you know, I'm, or they might have, they might have said some things that, got you to believe that, okay, it's not going to happen again. So I feel like there has been some third party interfering in the relationship. You don't know to what extent, but I feel like a lot of you are suspecting um, that it's a uh, flirtation, stepping outside of a relationship, and your partner is somebody possibly with very, very strong high libido. They are somebody that's very flirtatious, very exciting, very... Um, I I want to say like flamboyant. They're very flirtatious. And so it might spark jealousy. It might also create some insecurity within you. And um, you, you might not believe the person is completely um, 
honest and truthful and faithful. So I feel like for those of you who are in a relationship and it feels like you might even live together, like you're married, like you might have children together, you might not be formally married or you might even be formally married and there has been some cheating, some lying, some deception in the past and you're not sure if you can still give them another chance. So there's, I, I feel like suspicions, especially for those in, in the relationship that you, where you feel like you're almost like married, okay? Whether or not you're legally married, I feel like you feel like you're married. But there's trust issues. In the foundation, the foundation is something that you're coming into the month with the information about, okay? You already know this. What we have here is the nine of coins. And the nine of coins is overcoming obstacles. This is flying over your worries, okay? Leaving your worries behind, flying over it, uh, having the financial abundance and the st stability too. And um, feeling very good and, and just, you know, in a position where you don't have to worry. And I feel like for many of you, you have left a relationship behind. You have moved on here with the death card. And you're single. You're not even looking. You're not even like out there putting yourself out there dating. But a lot of people are sending you messages telling you how beautiful you are, how attractive you are, and how much they want to date you. So I feel like... Some of you, you're kind of just walking down the street and people are grabbing you left and right. That's what I'm sensing because especially for the singles, you have left somebody behind. There's a lot of untruthful like communication. There is also a lot of like suspicions about infidelity. And overall, you and the other person cannot agree on the future of the relationship. You've left them behind. You're not even trying to date and you know you have people soliciting you. The Page of Wands here, I'm not reading this so much as a person, but I do feel for some of you, you're dealing here with a fire sign. So we have here Sagittarius, an Aries or a Leo, a sun, moon, or rising. And uh, this is somebody who does have a little bit of a big ego. And uh, when you're dealing with somebody with a big ego, um, apologies... It's not something you're going to hear from them. The truth might not be something that you're going to hear from them because they don't want you to see them in a bad light. Um, apologizing means admitting that they did something wrong. And because they have a big ego, they feel that, oh, if I admit that I did something wrong, then the other person has one up on me, is going to lord that information over me. And I feel like you're dealing with someone whose vibration is very low they're not able to, they don't have a lot of wisdom and a lot of insights. And I feel like, you know, at their best, they have a really good heart. They might even love animals. They might, you know, be very nurturing and caring. But they have problems being truthful. I feel like you're dealing with someone who has trouble giving you the truth, okay? And so I feel like some of you are still grappling with this, still dealing with this. Others have moved on. And you have friends and family, social functions that you're going to. You also have a lot of, um, it's almost like you're still trying to move past it. So dating is not something that you're heavily focused on right now. There's a lot of suitors. There's communication. But I feel that you're still, you know, you want to be single. You want to have fun. You want to not have the burdens and the expectations of a relationship. So let me talk about the past. And I know I'm jumping all over the place here, but I feel like there's only one narrative. In the past, we have here the Two of Wands. And the Two of Wands is a relationship where I, I'm sensing you or the other person. It's a relationship where you or your partner feels very alone, okay? One person is putting in a lot of energy to maintain the relationship. And the other person is kind of bouncing around, not prioritizing the relationship. So automatically, it is very unbalanced. It's a relationship where you feel very stuck, very stagnant, where you feel like you feel very alone. You feel like the other person is not chipping in their fair share. And because you are a sign that is, you, you don't really complain, Capricorns. Um, and I also feel that you're very patient. You're patient like a Taurus. And you don't really um, call people out on things, okay? So... It's really important to demand what we feel we need in order to be happy in a relationship. And if those expectations are not met, 
it's because the other person is not the right one for you. Okay, so I, I feel that you need to really uh, voice what you need in the relationship. Otherwise, you will end up dumping a lot of energy in relationships and relationship partners that are not appropriate. So I do sense there was a lot of imbalances in a previous relationship where one person felt very alone. Even though you both are physically together, one person feels very alone. One person feels as if this relationship is not enough for me. But for whatever reason, um, and I feel like that that was what caused the breakdown, okay? It's linked up here as well with the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups basically means that I feel one of you is a major, major extrovert. And one of you is a major introvert. And so when you go out, one person just takes off, mingles with other people. And then the other person is kind of like a wallflower, feeling a little bit out of place, uncomfortable. And I feel like it's an ongoing issue where your partner is not responsive or is not sensitive and thoughtful to your emotional needs, okay? So really think about what you're trying to achieve here. And I feel for some of you in the past, you might have dealt with a fire sign, a Sagittarius, an Aries, or a Leo, or, or you might have been dealing with a water sign, a Pisces, Cancer, or a Scorpio here. Um, moving to the present situation, we have here the Eight of Wands, and the Eight of Wands is communication back and forth, and I do see a little bit of arguments coming through, and the Nine of Swords, which basically means, you know, worrisome communication, sleepless nights, having, um, feeling like that sense of getting messages, communication that you don't want to hear. Um, I do feel an element here about making plans with somebody and then having them kind of um, back out on it. So I'm sensing a lot of you have tried to date and you're dating somebody that's not very reliable, somebody who's got a big ego and they're very wrapped up in themselves. And I do sense that, you know, they're, you're shifting away from it altogether, which brings me to the present. And I feel like you're drawing your energy, you're dating very lightly, or you are finding, um, you're, you're finding more satisfaction in your relationship, like your friendships, you're finding more satisfaction in your work, you're finding more satisfaction overall, in the trajectory that your life is headed. And so you're taking a break from dating. And then others, I feel that you're with somebody, you've hit a very rough patch regarding infidelity or rumors or you know interference you're going to be sailing past that okay but I feel like the truth is not all there so don't be starry-eyed okay so here's the thing Capricorn um the reading is going to go especially this love portion of the reading is going to go multiple ways because there are a lot of people watching and um I do want to get like one common narrative for you but so I just want to leave you with this if this sounds familiar, this two of wands, where you're in a relationship with somebody and you feel very alone, you like the person. They're not a bad person. I don't feel like they're a bad person. They're very courageous, very like they have a good heart, but I'm sensing there's something about them that's a little bit dishonest, okay? If that sounds familiar, I feel that you need to leave that relationship, okay? And so don't uh, keep going back to it, wasting your energy, giving it a second, third, fourth, fifth chance because life is passing you by. And you have a lot of good things. I see this rush of new energy coming through for you in the previous reading. So allow that energy to also permeate your relationship sector and let it sweep away things and relationship partners that are not good for you as well, okay? Don't hold yourself back, all right? I do wish you the best Capricorns. As always, um, the, if you'd like to book a private reading, my information is in the description box below. Um, I'm not sure what my schedule is going to look like for June, so I'll find out by next week, okay? And I'll, I'll have more availability in terms of booking on the website. Um, I'll be back for the mid-month reading. I hope the reading has been helpful for you and, um, you know, uh, embrace the new energy. Sail away from things, okay? Wish you the best Capricorns. Take care. Bye-bye.